30 years of questions may have been solved by a five-year-old law in Nevada. We look at DNA tests for inmates and how we handle them here in Colorado. Have you noticed a lot of traffic lights being replaced in Denver? There's a reason for it, of course. I like to get on people for not returning their shopping carts, but I have to admit it would be tough to do it with a car parked there. Speaking of grocery stores, the next viewer begs us to figure out why they call it King Supers. And we send a reporter to follow a goat parade, which becomes a bit more of a goat rodeo next. There's been big news this week in two cold cases, hammer attacks that left this community in shock in 1984. A DNA hit sent investigators to a suspect, Alex Christopher Ewing, an inmate in Nevada's prison system. Kevin Vaughn with our Nine Wants to Know team broke that story and explains why it took so long to make that connection. In prisons across the country, inmates are behind bars who were locked up long before DNA testing was in use. More than 40 states have passed laws calling for testing of those prisoners. Nevada did it in 2013. But the state's Department of Corrections balked. They questioned whether the law applied to them. It wasn't until December 2016 that Nevada Attorney General Adam Waxalt issued a legal ruling that required that testing. It began last year. Earlier this year, Alex Christopher Ewing, behind bars since August 1984, was tested. His DNA profile went into the FBI's database July 9th. The next day, it was matched to evidence in those 1984 killings in Lakewood and Aurora. Jefferson County District Attorney Peter Weir made it clear today that he expects to solve more crimes the same way. And it should serve as a warning to those who may have committed these crimes that we are still out here. We are still looking, we are still working. If you are responsible, ultimately, we'll find you. People have been asking how Colorado does it. Our lawmakers passed a bill to do this kind of testing back in 2007. It doesn't require that testing be done until just before an inmate gets out, but Department of Corrections policy goes much farther. Essentially, they've already tested everybody in Colorado, including inmates that have already been, been held in other states. So Colorado and Nevada both do it. A lot of states don't, though. Yeah, there's about seven states that don't do this kind of testing. And so the question is out there, how many other crimes could be solved if all the people in state prison systems now were tested? You've got to think stories like this will push other states maybe to make a change. You would think so. I mean, there's a whole cohort of inmates that went into prison in the 80s and 90s when DNA testing wasn't available or was in its infancy that don't have their genetic fingerprints on file anymore. Kevin Vaughn, important reporting. Thank you so much. The names of three victims have yet to be released after their bodies were found this week behind a business along South Broadway in Denver. Two men and a woman were killed. Investigators say they appeared to be homeless. Denver's Road Home is a city program coordinating services for the transient community. Today, outreach teams met with folks to offer services and help them get sheltered and be safe sleeping overnight. Please come inside to keep yourself safe um, from, from crime, from elements, from, from everything that homelessness isn't offering in terms of safety. Now, no arrests have been made in this case. In fact, police say they will not update the case at all today unless something major happens. Homelessness is an issue we see every day. As housing costs go through the roof, more and more people are ending up on the streets. And they need health care, just like you and me. Our Byron Reed shows us how one Denver partnership is trying to help. Have you noticed any recent weight changes? Helping out is what Don Austin likes to do. Perfect. As an umpire and referee. I'd love to be involved with, with the kids, the youth and be able to be of assistance to them learning the game. Austin was living in Denver for five years when the unexpected happened. But something came about that just made it mandatory that, that I actually started living in my car. He's been homeless for the past six months, and now he's worried about his health. I'm no longer 20, so as we get older, we start getting more concerned about those things. And uh, it's, it's just something that I want to make sure that 
doesn't become a problem. So what am I in for for today? So we decided to get screened for cancer at Father Woody's Center for Hope. We're here to serve and, and this is just one of uh, 13 different services that we're able to provide on a daily basis. So I'm gonna check the floor of your mouth too here. The center has partnered with local doctors, dentists and clinicians to provide free head and neck cancer screenings twice a month for those living on the street. They're outside a lot, a lot of environmental exposure, a lot of dietary challenges. And we thought that that would be a very important group to, um, to evaluate, to make sure that we can find things early so they can be treated early. Mm -hmm. Making it easier for patients like Don. Why not come in and take advantage of it? To get a little help of his own. It's been a blessing for this time period that I've been in need. For next. It's always good to see good you guys. See you. I'm Byron Reed. Now, Dr. Nemechek says that programs like this are made possible through funding by the American Head and Neck Society. An improvement project is happening throughout Denver. You probably won't even realize what's being improved. The city is fixing up and changing some stoplights. What made us curious is that some of the ones being fixed, they don't look broken. So our Marshal Zellinger found out the city actually believes this will make your commute safer. Tell me, when can you see the stoplight over 8th Avenue at Washington Street in Capitol Hill? You probably saw the side light before the one over the intersection obstructed by the tree. The city of Denver is preparing to replace 19 stoplights on 6th and 8th Avenues from Broadway to Colorado. Two busy one-way roads through Cap Hill, Cherry Creek North, and Congress Park. The types of crashes that we were seeing along 6th and 8th Avenues were T-bone crashes. So those are mostly caused when people run red lights. Denver Public Works will replace the size of the lights. They'll all be 12 inches instead of some being 8. And instead of one light strung by wire over the intersection, you'll see something more permanent. With the mast arm, it could hold more weight, so we're able to put a signal over each travel lane. That's why you're seeing double stoplights at a handful of intersections, like Monaco and Alameda near Lowry. The city is replacing what looks like a perfectly good stoplight with another stoplight. But look closer, and you'll see it's more durable, so it can hold a light over each lane. And oh yeah, don't honk at me, but they're changing the left turn to a red arrow. When we add a left turn arrow, it's to help prevent crashes. And that's why a similar stoplight replacement is happening at Monaco and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Left turning traffic is stopping in the middle of the intersection, which isn't safe. So we're adding that left turn arrow there to help people make that turn safely. The upgrades are not just for drivers. On 6th and 8th Avenues, pedestrians will get new countdown crosswalks. But let's be honest, they're really for us drivers trying to figure out when the light's going to change. <laughs> Left, red turn, the worst. Just like the ones on Monaco, traffic signals are being uh, upgraded at Alameda and Broadway, busy intersection, and at 47th and Peoria in Montbello and Northeast Denver. Those are happening now. The ones on 6th and 8th Avenues, however, uh, uh, Steve, I almost called you Kyle there. Uh, That's okay. Are approved, but the design and process can apparently take a few years, so it'll be a bit longer that we're, we're going to be living in the wild, wild west. All right, Marshall. Great. We'll get that microphone figured out, too, yeah. maybe in the wild, wild west soon enough. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. A safety upgrade, CDOT completed before the summer isn't quite working as intended. CDOT added a median and street lights to Parker Road between Mississippi and Iliff. Problem is, the lights have never been turned on. CDOT tells us their contractor buried the electrical work before it was inspected and approved by the state. So state regulators may want to open up parts of the concrete now for some spot checks before they give it the okay. If the power isn't on by August 20th, CDOT will fine the contractor between two and $4,000 a day. And the power is about to go out in Uptown again, but this time XL knows about the whole thing. We told you this week about a series of power outages in Uptown. XL has no idea what's causing them. Now the utility says it's actually gonna do some work on its distribution system in that neighborhood. They are planning to shut off the power at 4 a.m. tomorrow for about 10 minutes. It's only gonna impact about 20 customers in that area between 17th and Colfax and Clarkson and Ogden. Now CDOT calls this initiative, they're building a giant conveyor belt. They call it innovative. And they're hoping that it'll reduce slowdowns and speed up the construction of C-470 in the express lanes project they're doing there. The conveyor belt will move concrete to the center of the highway to build those new express lanes. Four-foot guardrails on either side of the conveyor belt will be used to keep workers and concrete from falling on cars passing below. 
ZDOT says the conveyor system will save time, enhance safety, and reduce closures. It'll also look pretty cool, too. On the other side, I-25, thousands of residents in Adams, Arapahoe, and Douglas counties are about to see the end of a government fee eight years ahead of schedule. So over three decades, an extra $10 fee was added to vehicle registrations. It generated more than $200 million to help pay for E-470. This year, the E-470 board unanimously voted to remove that fee. It's scheduled to happen on September 1st. Voters approved the temporary fee in 1988. It was supposed to last until 2026, but refinancing made an early payoff there possible. We are looking ahead now. Let's say you saved $1 million for retirement. But you should be all set, right? You think you are. Not necessarily. A new study by Go Banking Rates found it really depends on where you live. Now, if you plan to move to Mississippi, that nest egg is estimated to last almost 26 years. The study calculated average expenses for people 65 and older, including housing, health care, groceries. These five states stretch one million pretty far. But Hawaii cuts that number more by more than half. Go banking rates found one million dollars will last about a decade there. So what about Colorado? We were wondering, you know, our relatively high cost of health care and housing makes Colorado a more expensive place to retire. But everything else, especially what we pay for in utilities, helps us save. A million dollars here would last 21 years and six days. And that is based on a retiree in Colorado spending about $47,540 each year. When it comes to poor parking jobs, you don't actually have to cross a line to cross the line. Chances are you've dropped into one of these stores to buy groceries. So shouldn't we know where the name comes from? <laughs> yeah. And an assignment for law enforcement is the most Colorado thing we saw today. Friday, everyone. Meteorologist Daniel Grant here in the Weather Center. You know what? We're looking pretty good. It's a Friday night. The weekend is here. My goodness, the sky's gorgeous. Nice to see some blue out there, but we do have some high ozone. So an ozone action day alert still going to be in place through tomorrow. So visibility will be poor. Air quality unhealthy for folks that have some respiratory issues. Kind of limit your time outdoors if you can. As far as the storms go, we haven't seen any around the metro area. They mainly are south of I-70 heading toward the San Juans tonight. Mostly clear skies. It should be a nice one for us. A little breezy out of the southwest, 5 to 15 miles per hour, but quiet as we head toward tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. You're looking good if you're camping, hiking, biking, fishing, you name it, you're good to go. The storms few and far between. If we see any of them, they'll mainly be in the mountains, maybe one or two stray showers. Daytime highs will be warming up. We return to the lower 90s across the metro area, the eastern plains with 70s and 80s. Up in the high country, it's going to be a warm and windy one on Sunday. And then as we head toward next week, Steve, it looks like temps cooling off just a hair, and we'll be tracking a few more thunderstorms. All right, but we're used to the 90s around we here. Are. We've got some experience. We like it hot. Thanks, mm -hmm. DG. We have a new segment here on Next, in case you haven't seen it yet. We call it You've Crossed a Line, your chance to tell another Coloradan that they are out of line. Lisa Vidal sent us this shot of a poor parking job at the Walmart on Tower Road. So we're not sure if the other side of the vehicle is outside the lines, but this is probably not intended as a parking spot anymore. You can see the cart corral right there. It might make it tougher for shop shoppers to park their shopping carts, which, by the way, PSA, put them away. Help the folks out. Keep them coming, though. Send us your pictures next at 9news.com or use the hashtag HeyNext. Our next question comes from viewer Casey Sanders. On Twitter, she asked me to flex my journalism muscles and figure out the origin of the name King Supers. And Adam Williamson with King Super's Corporate Affairs helped us answer this one. And while the explanation is pretty simple, the history of the grocery store chain is pretty good to know. So it was 1947 when Lloyd King opened the first King Super's in Arvada at the corner of West 57th and Webster Streets, where the Arvada Library is now. The original store was moved to the Arvada Plaza around 1960. So the King part, that's pretty obvious, you know, the name. Uh, as for supers, that is just a shortened form of the word supermarket. 
So Colorado now has 117 King Superstores. All of them, along with Colorado City Market Stores, are now part of the Kroger Company. Casey, thank you for the question. And Adam, thank you for the answer on that. Crosswalk says, walk this way. The sign says, don't. There has to be a good explanation for this, and Next has a knack for figuring this stuff out. Goats are on the move here in the city, and it requires a police escort. You're 12 years old? <laughs> and you saw her first, here on Next. It is a sign. One that confuses some pedestrians at Zuni in Florida in southwest Denver. They're getting mixed messages here. So there's a crosswalk there, but then there's a sign that says no pedestrians. So credit for this one goes to viewer Maria Lucero. So we called the city about this, Maria. They say that sign there is because you aren't supposed to cross the street the way the sign is facing. There's no painted crosswalk in the street there, which is kind of funny because if you move the photo over, there's actually a sidewalk ramp there that faces that direction. Hmm. If you see a sign that makes you chuckle or makes you puzzle, email pictures of it to next at 9news.com, or you could get our attention with the hashtag HeyNext. The most Colorado thing we saw today, well, it's also a recommendation to goats on the streets of Wheat Ridge this afternoon. Resident goat fanatic Ann Herbst was there with her camera to capture the obscene cuteness. So we have Daryl and his other brother Daryl over here. It's herd work. <laughs> But these are the guys to do it. They work for the city. Amanda Weaver's goat's summer gig in Lewis Meadows Park in Wheat Ridge. Okay, let's get that buckling out. Is one paid in plants. About five years ago, we uh, hatched a plan with the Park and Rec Department um, to start goats grazing on some areas rather than mowing. Um, and because goats are great for dealing with invasive weeds. But now, Daryl, get out of the way. It's time to move to weedier pastures. I am ready to pray. Are you ready? to parade which calls for a good you got him old-fashioned goats kind of do what they want to do goat parade if you want to walk a goat there will be ample opportunity <coughs> every time we move the goats i need community help so i post a community goat parade and i ask for people to come by seven goats <coughs> Amanda, the parade's goat princess. I guess so. And their entourage. I guess I'm the countess. Trot down Wheat Ridge's streets. I think it's cool. I wish they would come and mow my grass right now. That would be great. A procession complete with an official police escort. Hey, really? The herd heads about a mile down the road to an area between a school and Amanda's Five Fridges farm. Sort of an experimental site for me to think about what are the challenges of growing food uh, having animals in the middle of the city. Goat paradise. But first, <coughs> they gotta get them there. <coughs> As the cutest little traffic hazard comes to an end. Take a right on to quail. The goats celebrate another successful parade. That's how it's done. By getting back to work. Really appreciate it. Will you help next time? For next, this is Ann Herbst. We're going to have Ann out there helping next time. Five Fridges Farm moves the goats around to different spots in Wheat Ridge four or five times a year. The next move will be in about a month. Your good news is coming up next. How about the end? We end the week with some good news, like a 12 year old from Lone Tree getting national attention. Hi, what is your name? I'm Gitanjali. Gitanjali, where are you from? I'm from Lone Tree, Colorado. Uh, now you came up with this cool invention. I heard that Google saw it and they want to make a documentary about you yes. and the invention? Yeah. Are you kidding me? How cool is that? How cool are you? How old are you? I am 12. Gosh, you are yeah. so cute. That's so awesome. <laughs> uh, what you. is the invention? So I created a device called Tethys, which mm -hmm. detects lead in drinking water faster and cheaper than current methods. Wow. <laughs> Good for you, man. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. We first met Jatanjali Rao last October. She was right here in our backyard. She was named America's top young scientist. She used her invention to test the lead in our backyard fountain. No lead there. And there she went, and she's gone all over. She's even getting national attention. Certainly a strong candidate in our ongoing search for the smartest kid in Colorado. We'll see you next time.